so I'm going to talk a bit about who I am, how we got started into doing that. And, you know, I wanted to a bit inspire people to do it themselves by doing that. I'm going to talk about what we do. I'm going to going to talk a bit about how to create knowledge for the mobile world, uh, not the printed version, <laughs> and uh, sharing your work, and a bit about how to get your, your own project started. So it's meant to be inspirational. And we'll see how it goes. So a little about me, uh, the boring part, but most people kind of like to know those things. So I graduated, I, I did a health sciences diploma at the University of Moncton in New Brunswick. So I'm originally from Edmonton. So that's a two year program. Uh, did that, then transferred over to Quebec side, University of Sherbrooke. I did an undergrad in pharmacology. So I'm bachelor of pharmacology, the first year of the program there. Finished that, stayed there uh, for medical school did medical school, four years of it, and then uh, moved again to Kingston to do my residency in radiation oncology, which this year is technically, I hope, my last year. So it's, fi it's a five-year program, so I'm almost on that. So that's kind of the boring part of what I do, or what I am. The good part, I wanted to copy-paste pictures from Facebook, but maybe it's not a, that good idea. So you can look up my profile if you want <laughs> to see the fun part uh, of uh, me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so how I got here. That's essentially the history here. So we created four medical apps. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Code Quebec and Ontario. There are two apps to create, to look up limited use codes, which are codes that physicians need to write on prescriptions to get them covered by whole hip, okay? So it's a very kind of narrow field. So it's just one code. I've seen some work done here on the ICD-10, but it's kind of similar in, in some ways, right? Uh, it's just simple codes that you write on your prescription and you get it covered through a hip. But it wasn't done before, so we just put it together. Very simple. Uh, but it's selling well because it's very useful. The other one, as uh, was already said, it's, this one is called L'Antier. It's a practical guide to internal medicine. So that's an app that we essentially took a pocketbook and made it into an app format. And there's a bit of differences. At first, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't obvious as to how we're going to achieve that. And I'm not going to talk about that one much during my talk. I'm going to concentrate on the last one, MD on call. But before I get going, it's just that the author came to me personally and wanted his pocketbook to be made into an app because that's a hot thing right now. Everyone needs to have an app, right? That's, so, um, so he asked us, and you know, it's a it's a pocketbook that I personally use throughout medical school and at the beginning of my residency. So I was more than happy to be able to contribute to that work and make it into an app. So it took a bit. L bit longer than I first thought, so it took about a year of work to put together into something that I was proud of, of uh, making available. But uh, we ended up making it, and it's a huge success, obviously. It's, so, it's selling well ar around the world, and it's not an inexpensive app. So most people are familiar with the 99 cents free, 99 cents, $1.99, and more than that is considered expensive. This one is uh, $35. And it still made it at the top of that category in the medical app, in, in the medical category of the app store. So it's it's people wanted that text made into an app. And the last one is MD on calls, the one I authored personally uh, with help of my friends from you know different fields of medicine. But this is kind of my baby, and that's the one we're going to talk a bit more about during this talk. So we did those four apps. All of them, except one, reached the top selling of the category, uh, of the medical category in the App Store. Uh, it's Code Ontario. Uh, it reached number two. But the important part, I think, in that, in kind of getting an idea of why it's important to be number one, there's a few reasons. But uh, one is that there's 
right now in the medical app category of the App Store, there's 13,000 apps. Right? So to be able to make it as the number one selling, you have to have a product that people want. And that's essentially what we've been able to create so far with the work that we've done. Okay? So those four apps and their successes uh, ended up getting me that talk that I did for Apple. And as was already told through those con uh, contacts, I'm here today. So uh, I'm more than happy to be here. I'm from, I live in Kingston right now, so it's a relatively short ride to come here, but it's very nice to be invited to talk. You know, you guys will see like the master's students when you, you're invited, it's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> For a change, right? Because I don't have to do that, I'm asked to do it. It's, it's very cool. Okay, so how we got started. This is me, and this is Benoit Essien. We ended up being business, you know, the business partners. So we met when we were very young kids, like four or five years old. We grew up together, and when we were around 12, he moved uh, you know, to another side of the province, so, so to Moncton, New Brunswick, so it's about four or five hours away. So we kind of lost track of each other for about five, ten years or so. And, uh, and I always wanted to create an app, that kind of guy, and I downloaded the Apple SDK, and lots of people have done that. So it's a development kind of system and software to create apps for iOS. I downloaded that. I thought, well, you know, I can, I can make my way around that. So I'll try to develop my own app. <laughs> yeah, don't try that. Uh, it's, not, it's not creating an app is not creating, putting up a PowerPoint presentation. And it's very different. It's hard, it's coding. It's coding an app, it's code. It's not easy, it's not something, oh, I want to search here, you drag your bo search box and it automatically will search your app. It doesn't work like that. It's way more complicated than that. It's important to understand that. So it's not something you understand you know, within a few minutes. So I would have had to spend a few months reading a book, like books about programming and trying to get things done myself. But I'm a radiation oncology resident, and we work a lot, work in the hospital, and I didn't want that to take over my, the other part of my life or you know, uh, learning right now. So, uh, so I kind of put that on, on the table for, for a few months. Then one day I was browsing the App Store, and that came up. It was the number one or two seller at, in the medical category that day. And I noticed that, and this. I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> you know, I, there's not a, a lot of people with that name, right? It's not a usual name, for sure. So I did like everyone does in those situations. I Facebooked him, and uh, and and realized that he, at that time, he was living in Ottawa with his girlfriend, who was a medical student at the time, and Isabel was in Ottawa at that time. Uh, doing her PhD, so uh, so I was going there often. So we just had a, well, I wouldn't want to say a beer, but coffee. <laughs> um, and we started talking, and he said, yeah, sure, you know, it's something that's not technically very difficult to put kind of a, you, to make those things, like relatively simple apps together. It doesn't take a lot of know-how, but it takes that know-how that I didn't have, and he was willing to do that. So we got together and started planning uh, how things would look like and stuff. The idea that I had, just going to continue. The idea that I had was MD on call. Well, it didn't have that name at that time. But the idea was to put information in an app format for junior residents, medical students, and junior residents to help them when they're on call alone in the hospital. So it's very medicine oriented, I agree, and, and, I, and I know that people here are not you know, necessarily oriented towards medicine. But just take and just kind of think about how this information could be adapted to what you're doing, okay? Uh, so I wanted to create something that would allow this very narrow population to be able to rapidly access medical information at the point of care to be able to answer calls in the middle of the night 
without having to go through a book chapter. Because at, at 2 a.m. you want to get things done. You don't care about the follow-up of the patient in like, you know, what's going to happen to him in five years. You want to get him over, you know, that little bump that's happening overnight. So the rest of the usual team will be able to take over in the morning, but you're, you're there just to get fires under control. That's your job when you're a junior resident in the hospital. And there's a lot of little things in medicine that people take for granted that everyone knows, right? Every, you know, every doctor knows how to take care of pain or control pain or treat constipation, those little simple things. But when you haven't done it for a few months, you forget the medication dose, which medication you give for that, especially at the beginning of your, of your training. And I realized that there was nowhere that I could find that information except Dr. Wiki or Dr. Google at 2 a.m. And it's not you know, really where you want to get your information at that time when you can't really, you're not in a situation to make a very good judgment call about the quality of the information that you're looking at, okay? So I wanted to put everything together in something that was clear and efficient, okay? So that's how we got going with MD on call. So on the, the little icon there was the first version. So I took a pager and put it in like, you know, a little green background, make it vibrate or something. Uh, the pager is kind of, you know, residents and in medicine, there were kind of the last breed of people that uses pagers. So I think that was kind of a little interesting little thing there. So that's why I made it into the icon. The other one is something, someone running with a pager and a stethoscope. And the other one is the evolution of those two concepts. Okay? So kind of that's, that's the idea behind all this. So that's how we got going with uh, MD on call. MD on call was a, a, a hit, right? It was very, it was quickly adopted. Uh, and it made the front page of the app store. Uh, so it kind of skyrocketed in sales, and that was in November 2009. Skyrocketed international, you know, I think it reached number two in the U.S., number one by far in Canada uh, and all around the world. I think people really enjoyed having that, you know, very quick, those pieces of information. I'll go through that a bit later. Um, and since then, it's been, you know, riding the wave, but quite often it still goes back to the top three in Canada and things like that. So it's even two, three years after, it's still a uh, worthwhile app to, to carry around. And we just updated it. The last icon was from two months ago or so. So it's last major update there. Okay. So what's the difference between an ebook and MD on call? Because MD on call is information, you know, it's, it's text. So it's not one of those fancy apps that goes and get like information from a server and interprets it and presents it differently and you can interact with information. No, it's just text. It's relatively simple. Everyone can do that. So what's the difference between that and an ebook? Well, an ebook is relatively easy to put together, right? But the way people or in the medical profession and most healthcare professions actually, nursing, even lab techs, you know, they have to access information. They, they don't want to read a book. You don't want to start with one co you know, on one cover and finish on the other cover. You need quick access to little articles, pieces of information that you need to access quickly. And you need to be able to link them to easily go to one from the other, because when you're reading a book, like see chapter six for more information, you know, it's doable in a, uh, in a um, just ebook format too, though, but it's easy to do in an app form. And the chapters, the way we need to interact with the chapters is different. So that's a big difference between an app that's made to present text and an ebook. An ebook is meant to be read from cover to cover. So if you do a textbook or, or a chapter to chapter, but you need to read the entire thing. It's not meant for rapid access to information. So I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, MD on call here and illustrate what I mean by that. So that's one of the pages of MD on call. So when you look at it, this is management of a seizure. Okay? So it's quick, lots of abbreviations used. And you can scroll through it. In the details here, 
look at the font size. It's not big because you don't want your eyes to be doing this all the time when you're reading something like that. You want to, you know, small fonts. It's from side to side. There's not a lot of margins on both sides. It's not something that you read for like leisure that you want to, you know, be entertained in reading. You want to get things done. So very narrow margins, bullet points for simplicity. And that's what, how people want to access that information. That's the main page of the app when you launch it. It's visual appealing. So we didn't put like some, some people put, you know, don't put a lot of effort into making something pretty. And we try to do that. It costs a fortune because I'm not able to do it myself, but I think it's worthwhile. Um, see, you can, here you can see that the chapters on the right are divided as tabs. And the issues are all in the same uh, you know, column there. You can access quickly recents because that's what you, you know, what you really have to have access to quickly is usually you've looked at it not too long ago. You can take notes and you can search the information quickly. Talking about search, when you're in that kind of field, there's a lot of abbreviations that are being used. And for those in the medical field, you know that we're encouraged to use uh, the generic name for a medication, but no one does it really. We all use the brand name, like Ativan is lorazepam, but everyone will say Ativan. Okay, so for those in nursing, but that's that's a reality. But in my text, when I wrote it, I didn't want to write Ativan because it's a brand name, right? So you don't really want to do that. So I wrote lorazepam. But if someone search Ativan there, the article containing the word lorazepam will come up because of that. It's a custom search. Same goes for abbreviations. So even though I don't mention COPD in, my, in the text, I do, but if I didn't, you know, uh, and I would always refer to it as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, then it wouldn't come up on a normal search if it wasn't for the customized search that we did. So that's, those are all the little things that makes it even more accessible for the people that really needs it on the job. <coughs> Being able to take notes. Medicine is a field that's changing a lot and that varies a bit more than we'd like to admit between institutions. So some people will say, oh, that's how you treat a, you know, that's how you treat constipation. That's the way of treating it. And you go to the next place and you're like, what are you doing there? That's not how you treat constipation. So to kind of address that issue, we allowed to take notes like this. For people that have a slightly different ways of doing it, they can take their own notes and add a bit onto the information that we provide in the text. So sharing those apps, that knowledge. What I presented was the case of MD on call, which is an iOS app. So it works on iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, right? But it's kind of like the Windows ba and, and Macintosh back in the days, right? They don't talk to each other. So I can't take MD on call for iOS and load it on an Android phone. And we've been hearing a lot about Android over the last few months or, well, years, but especially more over the last few months. Same for BlackBerry or Windows Phone, right? So you have to make a decision as to which platform you're going to develop for or, you know, put your information on. For relatively easy apps, I say relatively easy because what we're doing essentially is pretty static, right? You just present the information. So it's essentially all the, the, the pages are coded. Well, not all of them, but some of them are coded in simple HTML that can be done by lots of people with very limited knowledge of technology, right? It's relatively easy to do. Uh, but the programming part of things has to be done in a certain language, okay? And that's where it becomes important to make a, a decision regarding which platform you're going to go with and, and to be able to share that information. Pretty much all the companies have their, uh, their uh, app store. 
I'm going to say App Store because there's trademark issues between like Apple and everyone else, but you know they never agree on anything for sure. Uh, but each of them have you know different uh, options, and they each pretty much work in the same ways. Uh, so they keep 30% of the profits, okay, uh, and for that 30%, they will host your application on their servers. So you don't have to worry about managing servers or anything like that. And they will handle, handle payments, uh, credit cards, you know, all those accounts for you, so you don't have to worry about it. They will handle sales tax in every country that they sell for, which is more than 80 now. So on the click of a button, your, avail your stuff is available in like 80 countries. And, uh, and they manage everything. And once a month, they transfer a check into your account. It's kind of neat. So for 30%, I mean, it's, it's quite reasonable. It was qu quite good for the time when Apple introduced it. Apple was the first one to do it with the App Store. The others followed quickly. But, that's, that's, but they all work essentially in the same ways. Okay? Um, but they don't have the same reach. And, uh, and unfortunately for us in Canada, that's essentially their market shares. Right? So iOS and Android pretty much share the same market share these days as of pretty much now. So they each, the last time I checked, last week, have around 700,000 apps available for them. So if you want to succeed in that, it's pretty much like trying to win the lottery, just in general. But it's doable. I'm not saying it's not doable, but it's, it's not easy. 700,000, there's a few billions download, like uh, 25 billion or something, maybe even more downloads for, for each of those stores, okay? Except BlackBerry, App World, and, and the Windows Phone, it's about 100,000 apps, and lots of them are not that good, although I wouldn't say that most of the 700,000 on iOS are any better, because lots of them are what we call craps, so CR apps. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they're not really useful. They're poorly put together. So the good quality ones, I wouldn't say there are that many. Uh, on the side note right now, we're going into the medical category of the App Store and trying to categorize them ourselves. Because one of the important tidbits, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but in the App Store, it's the developer that says which category of apps is app belongs to. Okay. So I put my apps on purpose in the medical category of the App Store. But lots of developers will do that even though their apps are not medical at all. Because from a marketing point of view, if you reach the top 100, you have lots of visibility, keeping in mind that you have 700 people, 700,000 people to compete with, right? So, so by putting your app into a not so popular category of the App Store, by having a few sales, you can make it up to the top 100 and stay there and have the visibility. So sell a few, but have the visibility. So there's a lot of apps in the medical category that are not medical apps um, because of the way people you know, do their marketing. That's not always correct. But to go back to the market share, that's essentially the market share. So fortunately for BlackBerry, they're not selling that many of those anymore. Uh, earnings are also different. Market share is pretty much similar in Android and iOS. Um, but the money you can make out of each store is a bit different, especially in the, in the uh, medical category. And w when I refer to medical, it includes like labs, like uh, you know, lab work. It includes nursing, you know, all those categories like allied health professionals, they're all there, right? Okay. Uh, but the way the stores are designed and the way people buy is different. And Android is, Android is known to have lots of devices, lots of people have Android phones, but those people are, have a tendency to buy less. So they, they download a lot of apps, they download lots of free apps, but they're less willing to pay for them. And it's just a reality. 
you know, people will try to debate that, but you know, we can easily show that our downloads uh, are about seven for iOS for one Android. And they're the same, essentially the same apps. So it's different, and we reach essentially the same number in the, in the, in the charting with each. So it's kind of a tiny detail, but it's not the absolute number that really matters here. It's the kind of trend that we see in, uh, in, in those uh, platforms. So I've been talking about what we've been doing uh, at Messel with Benoit. Um, how we succeeded in creating essentially something that people will want to use. And that's the key here. So you can create an app. I'm sure that most people here had an idea for an app at some point. It's quite, you know, everyone always, oh, I have, I have this idea. You want to do it, right? It's not simple, but it can be done. Uh, so how can anyone here get started? Well, it's, I think it starts by thinking about what you're learning here. You guys are doing masters. You, you're learning stuff. You're, you're achieving things. You're creating lots of stuff by yourself. Things that can be maybe transferred into an app form. But it's not easy. So if you can find someone to help you with that, that's a way of doing it. I wouldn't go to someone, a programmer or something. There's a different ways, and I can talk a bit more in a Q&A session. But there's a few ways of doing it. But please don't go to like a technical person and say, I have this great idea for an app. It's going to be amazing. They hear that all the time. Right? Uh, that's the reality of it. An idea is not worth a whole lot. Execution is worth a lot. Okay? Read, read and read about your topic, about what you're trying to achieve. Brainstorm. Make sure it hasn't been done before. There are 700 thousands of them. So it might as well have been done already. And you don't want to spend a year trying to do something to realize last minute that it's already been done. Someone did the exact same thing before you. Think, think, and think. I think it kind of gets everything I was saying together, right? It's not easy. It's doable. It's fun when it works. You know, I'm here, so I mean, it's fun, but it's not easy. And take the time that you think that it will take to create that and do times 10. And I've never been proven wrong yet. And I've been doing this for a few years now. And everything, every time I think of something, I call Benoit and I say, we'll do this, it'll take like just like 10 hours, yeah. 100 hours later, I'm like, damn, I'm still at the same point. It takes a lot of time. Things that you think are easy are not necessarily easy. And it's all in the details. Uh, simple things, but putting a back button on somewhere, well, where does that back button bring you every time you click on it? You have to think of those things, right? It's not. It's intuitive because it's always been like that. On the browser, you click back, goes back to the previous page, right? But it has to be hard coded into an app. It has to be done by someone. And someone had to think about that, that behavior. Simple, but that's how it works. Thank you. Thank you.